Boys and girls, I hope you had a great weekend. Um, sorry, it's a little dark over here. Let me see. Oh, I got it. Um, I've got Pugsley, of course, and Pugsley's buddy, which we still haven't come up with a name for this or that. And look who's joining us tonight. Well, Hedgehog is joining us tonight, too, for a story. Um, and I picked this story tonight. It's called Fox because I remember how many of you are, whenever we share our favorite animal, around the circle, there are so many of you that say foxes are your favorite animal. So I found this one on my shelf and I thought this would be a perfect one for me to share with you today. Um, one of the things I absolutely love about this book is the illustrations. So the author of this book is Kate Banks and the pictures are by George Hallisleben. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and he just did an amazing job and they look to me like they're <clears throat> like they're paintings. So I really think you're going to enjoy this book too. Fox. Hey, I bet that's a word that you can tap and stretch all by yourself. You knew how to spell that. Look how cute. It is spring in the forest among the roots of a great oak tree in a brown earthen den. A baby fox is born. And the rain comes and goes, and the little stream grows into a rolling river. This is kind of what the weather was like on Saturday, and a little bit Sunday morning, too. Really, really rainy. The baby fox buries his head in his mama's thick fur, the color of burnished leaves, and he sucks hungrily from her teat. Look how cute. They're all like this beautiful orangish color. Even the background, because they're laying on some pretty colored leaves that must have been left over from the fall and then winter came. I know when I go out hiking, there's still a lot of brown leaves, even though it's springtime, there's still a very, uh, very big piles of brown leaves as I hike and lots of acorns. As I went on my hike today, there were lots of acorns everywhere. The sun comes and goes and the buds will start to show on the sprouting vines. The little fox pokes his head out of the den. He creeps toward the meadow. No, fox, no, says his mother. You're not ready, says his father. When will I be ready? asks the little fox. He's very curious. He wants to get out and explore the world. They wait until the sun sets, bloated by the weight of day. Then they lead the little fox out of the forest. They leap like shadows through the fields, and the stars come and go, and the crescent moon grows into a big round ball. The little fox is hungry. His mama shows him how to find blackberries. His father shows him how to catch rodents and birds. Am I ready? The little fox asks. Not yet, says his mother. I'm going to stop for a minute, boys and girls. I heard a word, rodents. Does anybody know what rodents might be? Yeah, rodents are small animals like uh, mice. Uh, that would be an example of a rodent. And the clouds come and go, and the small wind blows into a billowy gust. The little fox pricks up his ears. He hears a distant howling. The enemy is nearby. The little fox moves toward the sound. No, fox, no, says his papa. He leads the little fox deeper into the forest, far from danger. I'm wondering what would be an animal that would make a howling noise that would be a predator for a fox? Are you thinking about that too? What kind of animal that could be that howls? As the sound comes and goes, and the silence grows into a peaceful hum. Look at them exploring together. 
beautiful. <clears throat> the little fox trots through the woods. He watches his papa cross the river and he follows. No, fox, no, says his mother. When will I be ready? asks the little fox. Soon, says his mother. Boys and girls, as I'm looking at the papa fox in the water, I'm having a connection. Are you having a connection? Can you think about a story that we read at the beginning of the year where the fox goes into the river and swims across? Are you thinking of the gingerbread man story? That's the one I was thinking of. That's called a text to text connection. We're thinking about two books and something that's the same in both of those books is the fox goes into the river. She shelters them in the shade of a tree. Overhead, the branches sigh like a lullaby, setting the world at ease. And the birds come and go, and the saplings grow into stately, tall trees. Look how big that tree is. And I can see over here there's some kind of big birds that are flying. Fall comes, the trees begin to shiver and their leaves change color. Mama gathers extra berries and seeds. The little fox blinks his shiny eyes and twitches his black velvet nose. Am I ready now? He asks. Almost, said his mother. Papa digs a shallow hole in the dirt for storing food for winter. Then he retraces his footprints to mask the trail. I just learned something I did not know, boys and girls. I did not know that foxes will dig a hole and hide their seeds and nuts. Why do you think they do that? Did they say in the story that winter was coming? That's a really sneaky thing to hide the food in there but I bet they need to do that so that they can survive because when the ground is all covered with snow, it's very hard to find food. It's very smart. And I like how the little fox is really paying attention to his dad. He's a really good listener. And the days come and go and the little fox grows strong and able. Can you tell what season is, is here? Look at that. You see those colored leaves? They have the same color as the foxes. <clears throat> At last, the little fox can hunt on his own. He can feed himself and bury his food. He can hide in the bushes and run like the wind. Now I'm ready, he says. Go, fox, go, said his mother. Here he goes. And as the orange sun leaves the sky, like a big goodbye, the little fox goes. And the mama, <clears throat> excuse me, and the mama fox knows, and the papa fox too, that he will be fine. The end. So it seems like when the little fox was born, it was the spring. So we went through the seasons of spring. We went through the seasons. I remember it was kind of rainy in the spring. We went through the seasons of summer and the fox was learning all the things he needed to survive. And we got all the way to fall and just before winter. So it seems like it took about six months, maybe six to eight months for the fox to learn all of the things he needed to learn and how to survive on his own. There he goes. He's going to go off and find, maybe build his own den to live in for the winter. Because now he can be super independent. He paid attention. He learned all the things his mom and dad taught him. And now he is ready to go out into the world. Oh, look at that. Looks like Fox found a friend. I hope you like that book, boys and girls. Like I said, one of the things that I really enjoy, not only is the story, the words that Kate Banks wrote, 
but I really think that the pictures in it are amazing. The colors that the illustrator used um, looked a lot like the real colors in nature, and I thought that was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the book, Fox, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night with another story. Take care. I miss you guys.